So welcome back to FPV Reviews and welcome back to Gemini Flight Testing. Here's our takeoff. As you can see we've made a small change. We painted the nose of the airplane white. I was having a hard time seeing it when it was we were flying over a, a dark background. So this this makes my orientation just a little easier uh, so I can see what direction my camera is pointed with with the head tracker. So for this flight today we're we've got a full battery load of 10 batteries and you can see we're drawing quite a few amps uh, to climb in the lower left hand corner uh, but we're going to be pulling that the the throttle back pretty soon here because it, we're not we're not going to climb very high but what we're trying to do today is to demonstrate the endurance capability and loiter capability of the Gemini and as usual we're carrying our pan tilt camera underneath with the observer camera my dad's operating it and so we're gonna not go too far away today um, we're gonna stay relatively close within a few kilometers of our landing zone and we're gonna try to conserve power you can see we've backed the throttle off already uh, to about half of the the full amperage um, actually going less now so we're going to try to throttle back and see what it takes to maintain altitude and we're going to try to do an endurance flight and see how long we can stay up while carrying the observer camera payload the second video transmitter so I've got my goggles I'm seeing the pilot's view uh, but my dad's operating the observer cam and he's got a flat screen on the ground that's separate and they're both hooked up to the antenna tracker that's what those extra channels are for in the MFD antenna tracker so you can add things like a second video system so the equipment's working really well we're, we're very happy with it and so this is sort of what you'd call I guess a, a search and rescue mission it's a simulated one so you know we're we're I'm here I'm paying attention to some things on the ground uh, just doing some observation this is about 14 or 15 minutes into the actual flight and we can hear an aircraft uh, coming overhead even where we're at so here I've spotted it already that's the great thing about this airplane if you look up toward the well, toward the left, or well, almost toward the center of the screen. Now, up above us, you can see the aircraft coming over. Now, what I like about this aircraft is I have very good visibility and pretty good definition, so I can actually see and avoid air traffic very well. And I've got the observer camera down underneath that can that can help spot for traffic as well. So, with that safely gone. Uh, at least for the moment this is a bit later in the flight and we're seeing the same plane again flying roughly the same pattern so you can see them there up toward the top of the screen so I've decided to, to just stay at this altitude because he's seems to be flying a somewhat of a holding pattern at that altitude so since we have plenty of separation I'll just stay where I'm at and for those of you saying, oh, you know, that's that you're you might be above 400 feet or whatever, you know, keep in mind we're not in the United States. A lot of the air traffic that's in this area is actually very low, and there's not much air traffic at all. And we're also flying from the designated model flying field in the area, the club field, so air traffic uh, in the area knows that we're there and we're we're not intending to cause a problem for anyone so we're we're being very careful uh, we actually have an extra observer on the ground today for this flight so here's a little bit later in the flight and we're, we see a uh, ship out in the bay at this point we can see it and decide that we have plenty of battery so here we are we've gone out a ways to take a look at it part of our simulated search and rescue let's see if we can determine what kind of ship it is 
and it looks like a freighter with some deck cargo, maybe a couple of yachts. It's a beautiful day out, although there's a fog bank starting to come in, so I'm monitoring that periodically during the flight to make sure it's not going to be a factor for us coming back. Although I have flown with just the instruments uh, with this aircraft and it has not been a problem. I, I'm pretty sure I could get it back without any trouble. So here we are a bit later in the flight. We're roughly two hours into the flight now and the battery voltage is starting to drop so I decide I'm going to stick a little bit closer to our landing zone but feel pretty comfortable at this altitude. I've got the, the throttle backed way off so we're only drawing roughly 8 amps or so per motor. So considering the battery load and the size of the Gemini that's very very efficient. And we made some calculations and think we may be able to achieve the, the three hour mark depending how the batteries hold up and their actual capacity. So here we are, the, the battery voltage is starting to get pretty low and I've decided to keep very close to, to the landing zone here. And I've started to back off the throttle a little bit and let the plane descend to be easy on the batteries and kind of just knowing that I'm going to have to make a landing soon. So I can clearly see the landing area right below us there. Also looking because there's a couple of ATVs that are running around across my runway. So, But it's sort of a dry lake that I'm using for this flight, not the usual runway. So there's plenty of room on that dry lake to, to come in and land when the time comes. So it really all depends on the batteries right now, but I'm seeing the voltage drop quite a bit and I'm pretty sure that they're not going to hold up for much longer. And you know again we've got we should have 51,000 milliamp hours of battery and we're here just just over 46 and uh, the voltage has dropped so much I've decided to cut the power and I'm just going to glide in. I'm not sure exactly what our timing is here but I know it's very very close to three hours. You can see those ATVs crisscrossing our landing zone but it's so large I'm not very worried about it but I am monitoring their position. Right about this time I I take the goggles off and switch to uh, visual flight mode right about there. My head tracker is centered so I've taken the goggles off and we're going to take it over for a manual landing. I get a little bit downwind here and quite can't quite land exactly where I want to and this is a disclaimer it's not the best landing there's a little bit of a bounce here but uh, it's not bad and the nice landing gear on the Gemini absorbs the impact nicely and there's absolutely no damage. So, so the total time for that flight of endurance was 2 hours 48 minutes and 30 seconds.